Hi, and thank you so much for joining me again. Today I have another tip for you, and this is especially for writers, but it's also for anyone at all who has a huge task ahead of them and they're a bit overwhelmed. For writers in particular, you know, if you wanna, if you're someone who wants to write a novel or a series that's even heavier, uh, it's a bigger, bigger task. But yeah, whatever you want to write, a short story, a novella. Uh, for me in particular, I like to write uh, novellas. Like I like the short form a lot. And this is why I actually wanted to do this tip because I find this very useful. Um, before, when I started writing and focusing more on doing it as a profession, an actual job to like make a living of, I was overwhelmed because I was thinking, oh, how am I going to get uh, 50,000 words done, which is uh, the minimum kind of for a novel. It's considered a short novel, 50,000 words. And if you're writing fantasy, that's really short. But yeah, basically what I've learned in time is that if you do little goals, if you decide I'm going to write for two months, I'm going to write 500 words a day, like um, a few days ago, well, maybe like two weeks ago, um, or even longer than that, I started working on this uh, novel or novella, like on this story. I had um, the idea in my mind uh, about this woman alone and trapped in an old house. And I wanted to write like a, a ghost story, but not just a ghost story. Um, I mean, that sounds a bit cliche, obviously. No one wants to write just a ghost story or just a romance story or just a thriller. But yeah, it is what it is. And I was thinking how to go about just writing it. Um, and I was thinking, oh, because I um, really enjoyed writing my collection of short stories. And that was, that is only about 23,000 words. But I, I got the stories written fairly quick, although for short story writing, uh, that's a different kind of skill. And yeah, it just, just because they're short stories doesn't mean they come to the person writing them, they come really too quickly. Um, I, I wrote them fairly quickly, but uh, sometimes it took me a while to think about some things. And yeah just don't dismiss it if it's shorter than 50,000 words if it's just a thousand words it doesn't mean it has less impact or is uh, less difficult the task is smaller because you don't have to write that many words obviously but it's still a lot of thought that has to go into it and I was thinking since I liked writing the short story collection a lot I will attempt to write a novella this time and it, this kind of story I wanted to write is it seemed perfect for this kind of form, like a, in between a short novel uh, but novella, you know, like a longer novella maybe. About 25 or 30,000 words, up to 40,000 words maximum. And I was thinking if I write 500 words, so 500 words a day for two months, that's a lot of words done you know i actually wrote it like 500 words a day for 30 days that's 15,000 words so you, you can see how you can get a lot of writing done 500 words is not too much but if if that sounds like a lot go for 250 250 words you know 250 words it's basically a page a page of a notebook depending on how uh, big your writing is or you know uh, on the computer depending on what settings you have but yeah I find that if you set little goals your task becomes smaller in a way you don't think as much about the overall goal you just think about getting the words done for that day getting that scene done so I was thinking I had like 17,000 words corrected, that's why I, I made the calculations and I was like, oh, if I write 500 words a day for 30 days, that's 15,000 words and that brings me really close to, uh, with the 17,000 words I already have, it would bring me close to a good-sized novella. 
but the thing is I have all those 17,000 words I had, they were like chapter, raw chapters, uh, but most of it was uh, research notes and handwritten notes collected in Evernote and on my notebook. Um, so yeah, don't imagine that oh, I have the novel, it's almost ready, I still have a lot to do. But uh, I was thinking, because I had those notes, I could, I have that idea and another idea and how to develop that. So take an idea you have for a scene, for example, maybe a character uh, meets another one, uh, the main two people, the main characters meet, how do they meet, uh, how do they actually interact at first, um, just write that scene and you can, you'll notice that writing 500 words goes really quickly, you know, even a thousand words, even more. And I also I was thinking how to, I was thinking about the ending, like, oh, I know the ending, so I, I wrote some, uh, I wrote, kind of wrote the ending, or what I wanted the ending to be like, and obviously it's still a raw scene, but it's very, I don't know, I just feel like I've gotten something done, and now I just have to build up to it. That's not how it always works. Sometimes I have no idea how the book ends, uh, but I have the beginning. And as I said, I had this idea about a woman trapped in a house and I wanted to write about many things. With this book, I want to... There's many things that have troubled me for the last few years, really, about our society, um, about how, um, how sex sexuality um, is uh, treated in our time and age, um, all sorts of things about gender and many, many things I would like to approach. But the, many, um, the main important aspect was that I wanted to write about this character who's trapped in a house and deals with all these emotions and yeah. So anyway, this is departing from my point. My point was that uh, if you want to get as many words written on the page, um, you basically can um, just decide how many words you're going to write a day. Decide for a minimum, for example. And once you have that minimum, you can write, for example, you say, oh, I can't write more than 250 words. I have a day job, whatever you're doing, um, taking care of kids or whatever, and you can't get more words done. So you, you put, I'll write 250 words a day and, you know, and once you start writing, you notice that you'll be able to write more. And as long as you write the minimum word count, you won't feel bad about it. So don't try to set a goal that you is that's very likely you will not achieve because that will get you will get you really depressed in a way and sad and you'll think, Oh, I can't do this, it's just too difficult, I'm just not good, I don't know I don't know how to do to do it, how to write, whatever. That's just um, a bullshit really, you know? As long as you split your tasks into smaller ones you will get there. It just takes you a while and I hope this uh, this is a tip that helps you because uh, I, f I find it particularly useful for me to write and yeah I just wanted to share it with you because maybe there's other people who have trouble um, or have battled this sort of issue in the past and uh, you're maybe feeling down on yourself a bit and don't know how to go about it. And maybe you're not very organized like I was, and still am, I'm not very good at, um, at organizing. But um, yeah, another thing that has to do with this is, if you have an idea, maybe before going into writing, try and put on a page, like, like you know, a notebook, you have a notebook, try to write on this notebook, this is a page, Normally it's recommended to have an A4 page because that's slightly bigger and you can get a few more words done on the page, a bit more story, right? So what, you sh what is recommended to be done is to basically write the story briefly. Write the main characters, focus on the, the main thing in the story, beginning, the middle and the end, some of the events. Try 
much as possible not to go into details about all sorts of random things that happen keep them keep those in maybe in your Evernote app or in a separate on a separate page as bullet points and make sure I actually do that I have for example 10 main scenes that I want to incorporate and then I added 10 more <laughs> and then it, get, it got a bit more uh, complicated obviously as you go along in the story you have like subplots and you're like oh I'm gonna do that and that but with this, it's just basically an outline of the novel, like what you want to achieve of the story. And I, I think it's quite useful to keep you grounded, um, you have like an anchor. And you, you know, if you get lost with the chapter, you're going someplace you didn't uh, anticipate. Sometimes that's, sometimes that's good, but sometimes you just might start writing random things. You think they're very, they sound really nice and fancy. It's a really good scene but they have nothing to do with the story and it's better to take that out and keep it maybe for another story for example I was um, reading on Nicholas Sparks uh, website uh, if you don't know Nicholas Sparks he wrote The Notebook, A Walk to Remember uh, books that have been adapted very famously and very well beloved stories and he was talking about when he was writing The Notebook uh, there was a scene about Noah um, I think that's his name, the main character, the protagonist, um, about him going to the war and it was about this book of poetry and um, it was like a chapter um, or something like that and then he got it reduced to three uh, four paragraphs and then those paragraphs uh, got to two paragraphs and then to one and then that paragraph got to like three sentences and those three sentences uh, eventually ended up being one single sentence about the poetry book and his experience in the war and it was something to the effect that this the book um, Oh, I wrote it down, but I forgot. It was something to the effect that the book stopped uh, a bullet from his from hitting him or from something. It was much more um, beautifully put, um, but I can't remember right now the exact words he used. But if you go on his website, you'll see. Um, so uh, it's very good to cut on words. But this is another tip basically <laughs> so i guess you get two tips you know like about editing uh editing your work it's like when you try to put the words on the page try your best not not to think about editing i'm very bad at doing that like especially with my first novel i couldn't stand the errors when as soon as i saw a typo a missing letter or a mistyped word i was like oh i need to fix it i can't stand that error because I write, I write in English, but I, I, I think my English is, my written English is pretty good. I com compared to others, uh, my, yeah, I, I would say I'm quite proud of my English. My, none of my spoken English is get out from my voice, but yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, uh, just get the words done, get the story on the page, and then worry about editing it. And this is what I'm actually doing now with uh, my current work in progress. Um, this ghost story kind of romance dark romance it's um, yeah it's kind of we'll see how i'm gonna like actually categorize this just yeah just get the words on the page and um, once you have the words on the page then go and edit and with with the story i'm writing at the moment i am doing that i'm actually getting the story on the page uh getting the scenes done and I have noticed some errors I've done and they, they don't surprisingly they don't piss me off as much <laughs> I just let them be because I know maybe that sentence might not even actually end up in the finished uh, manuscript so there's no point for me wasting time and fixing a, a missing coma or missing letter or whatever it is just focus on the story for the first draft and yeah but for me it's why i do that why i was fixing the errors while writing is because i feel it gets me closer to completion than if i just have to come back to the entire manuscript and go over and edit it i i, I found i used to find that a daunting task but i think i don't know i'm okay at the moment i'm just more concerned about getting the story on the page okay so this ended up being longer than i anticipated but I hope you found this useful 
and um, yeah thank you again for joining me and have a lovely day